that, uh, of that opera in it, I think. But it was very important to me, first and foremost, that it felt like a Star Wars movie. And to me, growing up as a kid, Star Wars movies mean fun, and they mean they're an adventure, and they always, you can have the, the you know, the operatic moments, but they always have one foot in Flash Gordon, and that's essential. And so um, I very much wanted to continue on the tone that I think J.J. and Michael Arndt and Larry Kasdan created so brilliantly in The Force Awakens, that, that humor and that fun and that sense of adventure. Um, so there is darkness in the film. I hope that audiences, are, audiences will be pleasantly surprised by how fun and how funny it is. Um, that's my hope. Thank you. We have a question from Canal 11. Adelante, por favor, Canal 11. Hi, Sandra Sitlin. Um, you had the opportunity to be with Carrie Fisher in her last movie. Which was your best memory with her? Or, or how was this experience? Is that to me? Uh, you know, everything about Carrie was larger than life. Uh, her, she was like some latter-day Auntie Mame. She wanted to live life to the fullest in every moment. Uh, I'm selfishly upset that she's not here because if she were, she'd be, you know, giving me the middle finger and making faces at me <laughs> as I tried to answer these questions. Uh, her timing was impeccable, except in this case. But, uh, she, I can't imagine my life without her. She, even though we we have for years not seeing one another, we're almost more like real siblings. We'd have big fights and scream at each other, and and, and but there was always that basic level of trust and love. It was so great to be able to reconnect with all the cast in in, in Force Awakens because. You know, life goes on and you don't see people that you want to as much as you'd like to. Uh, she's wonderful in the film. There's an air of aura of poignancy that is unavoidable, knowing that this is her last performance. But uh, uh, every time I feel sort of sorry for myself, I have to think about Billy Lord. She lost not only her mother, but her grandmother in the space of two days. It's unimaginably tragic. But, you know, it's a part and parcel of the films that are about triumph and tragedy and, and you know, continuing on through the worst of adversities. So um, I, I'll never stop missing her. And uh, uh, I, again, uh, it's hard to, you know, have to deal with that uh, while promoting the film because if, I, if, if life were fair, she'd be here. Uh, Mocking me and all of you. <laughs> okay. Tenemos una de hola. Adelante. Hi, uh, for you, JC. Um, you, Ray has become a role model and a hero for uh, young girls. Um, do you feel any kind of pressure? And um, what did you learn of yourself in The Last Jedi that you didn't knew before uh, in The Force Awakens? Um, I did feel personal pressure actually going into The Last Jedi because The Force Awakens had just come out like a month before. And so I was sort of dealing with, firstly I'd never been in a film before, so a film I was in came out and then it's a Star Wars film that had come out. And then, you know, people are like, hey, I'm like, hey, what did I do? And they're like, oh no, you're in that film. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's a lot to, to take in. And then, and because I knew what people had responded to in The Force Awakens, in particular, my relationship with John, Ray and Finn on their adventure, I, um, I think that was my, like, my, my nerves, because I thought, oh, if this is the way people are responding, I don't know what I did the first time round that's made people respond like this, and people are so kind, but I don't really understand it, so I don't know how to do that thing again. And if I'm not with John at the beginning, I don't know how to do that, because he was like my support network the first time around, him and Harrison, but John in particular. 
Um, so I, I felt nervous because I thought, oh, is this going to do for people what the first one did? Will people respond as strongly to this story as they did with that? And then obviously we were able to have some rehearsal and we sat down and we talked through um, a lot of stuff. And then you realise, yes, it's, it's um, a challenge and different things happen in the galaxy and that's what's exciting and that's how people grow. And, and so those nerves went away, but I did... Um, I did feel that very much, and I cannot remember the second part of your question. I'm so sorry. The pressure you feel of being a role model for young girls. Uh, no, I don't feel the personal pressure because I'm not Ray. Like, um, she's way better than I am. I'm just really lucky to play her. Um, I don't have the the fate of the galaxy resting on my shoulders. I am just in a film that makes people happy. Um, so. Yeah, and I think, like, yeah, I don't feel that pressure so much. I think it's really lovely. And because it really was a surprise how people responded, I'm still blown away by how kind people are. And especially when parents are like, I took my daughter and I could get her the costume and she's so happy and, like, little boys want to run like Ray. And, like, that's incredible. There's nothing... It's overwhelming, but there's nothing scary about that. It's just kids being kids it's just it's 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 wonderful it's really wonderful well, ray has such empathy it's so easy to relate to her and she's sort of analogous to my character because she came from nothing but we shouldn't forget that uh, carrie even though she was royalty was no shrinking violet she wasn't a damsel in distress. I, the thing that I, when I read the script, I thought it was so funny. First she complained about the, the ship that we came to rescue her in, which is so human. And then she was dissatisfied with our rescue. You called this a rescue? And she grabbed our gun and made and me and Han look like chumps. So that was effortless feminism. But uh, it's, it's great to see it continue. And like Ryan said, to see these young girls all done up like Ray, it's it's uh, really heartwarming. You know, now I have Wonder Woman and it's, you know, Sigourney Weaver and Aliens and Linda Hamilton and Terminator and so forth, but uh, it's, a, it's a great thing for the empowerment of, of, of female characters. Hello, over here, Cristina Ibanez from Sensa Cine Mexico. Uh, my question is for you, Mark. Um, us Mexicans, we learn a lot about uh, Star Wars and Luke all over these years. Uh, there are a lot of uh, big lessons that even though this is a fiction universe, we can use in our personal lives. But you being here in Mexico for the first time and uh, well, seeing a little bit about us Mexicans, uh, what do you think Luke uh, can learn about us after uh, maybe the <laughs> earthquake we have and the <coughs> union we show? Maybe is there anything that Luke can learn about Mexican people? Well, of course. I mean, the idea of doing the right thing for the greater good rather than for self-aggrandizement. You know, that there's safety in numbers and that you help the people that are less fortunate than you. Those are all tenets of the film. Uh, and by the way, when I was a kid, I did, my father and, uh, was in the Navy, so we lived in San Diego and I went to Tijuana several times and that's where I got my first canteen floss marionette so <laughs> I'm a big fan of his but I, I, listen how can you live in Los Angeles and not love the Latin culture we're the minority there and when you think about where I lived in California San Diego Los Angeles San Jose San Francisco are you picking up a trend here <laughs> They're like saints. So, you know, it's great. It feels like, I mean, the, you're so, the people are so warm here, they make you feel like part of the family. Okay. Eh, tenemos tiempo para un par de preguntas más. A ver, a ti te vi primero. Adelante. Okay. Hi, I'm Silva from Guayalince, and my question first for Mark. Um, Every Star Wars fan here in the front. <laughs> Every Star Wars fan uh, show love you and show you that love and respect to you. So, do you have any interesting and shocking story that happened to you with the fans of Star Wars of all these years, Big Luke? 
And for Daisy, um, we don't know who is the family of Ray, and we don't want to know, but <laughs> I don't want you to tell us. But if you could choose as a fan, what would you choose, a Skywalker or a Kenobi? Well, I'm sitting right here. <laughs> What's she going to say? Listen, it, just in general about your question about Star Wars fans, what is amazing to me is the passion they have and how they've incorporated the mythology into their own lives. And you hear these personal stories of getting through, uh, you know, terrible times in their own lives. You know, it helped when my sister was in the hospital or I met my husband online and, you know, we, we had a, by the sequel, we had a young child and named it Leo or whatever. It, it's astonishing. They, it's, uh, it never gets old and I'm, I'm just sometimes moved by the fact that they have taken us to heart and, and, uh, you know, I don't, I don't encounter it on a day-to-day on -day basis. It's usually when I come to fan events and so forth, and, and people tearfully recount how important these films are to them. Because, you know, at the end of the day, they're two and a half hours of escapism. Uh, but as I've learned over the years, it, it means so much more than I could have ever imagined. And the idea that I was a small part of something that made so many people so happy it's just uh, I, the greatest gift I could have ever been given. Now, back to the Skywalker <laughs> Kenobi question. The thing is, anything I say is going to be, uh, you know, uh, more weighted now. Um, uh, what I think is really amazing, because again, because I, I didn't understand exactly the impact of Star Wars, I, I didn't fully, well, like when Force Awakens came out and everyone was like, oh my God, who's your parents? I was like, oh. And like, I was genuinely surprised that that was the main question. Because for me, like getting into something, um, eyes wide shut sort of thing, what I found so amazing in The Force Awakens is, is Ray meets Finn, and they've never met before. He's a defected stormtrooper. She's a scavenger. And then we're like <coughs> brother and sister, and it's an amazing connection. And in that moment, like Ray finds a piece of family. And before that, she's met BB-8, and she finds a piece of family. And then she meets Han Solo, she finds a piece of family. When she's finally with the resistance, it's like, ah, oh, this is sort of where I belong. And then off she has to go on another adventure. But essentially, Rey is seeking belonging. And so obviously, a lot of Star Wars is looking back and wondering where she came from. But I think the wonderful thing, especially about this film, is it's all about progress and the relationships people are making now. And obviously, things are influenced by what you had before. But it, I, I just think it's beautiful, the relationships that are formed, people that aren't even necessarily <coughs> They wouldn't be classed as family, but family is who you choose, I think. You can choose to love people and bring them into your home and, and make a life with a group of people that have no blood relation to you. <laughs> so whatever I say now is going to be taken. So, so in, this, in this film, Ray turns up and, and essentially has a quest from someone else um, for Luke. It's not really about her, she just has to do this thing that she's sort of been asked to do. Um, but because of the space that Ray and Luke have on the island, she's able to ask questions and seek guidance from Luke. And in that moment, again, Ray finds a relationship of sorts, regardless of whatever that is. It's a relationship of sorts, and I think that's what's so wonderful is the people Ray meets. It's like she meets, she's so open, like she's been alone for so long, but she's so open to like finding connections with people. Um, and she's not met a Kenobi, so it's got to look. Hey kid, maybe you're a solo. <laughs> That's my Harrison Ford! <laughs> I have to announce my impressions when people get to get what they are. Por ahí tenemos otra pregunta, por favor. Buenos días, good morning. Uh, Rodrigo Cervantes for NPR and KTC Symphonies. Uh, so a question in, in general for, for all of you is how do you think that your characters in the movie resonate to the current, given the current political and economic uh, tensions and situation between Mexico and the United States? Is there like any echo on the narrative? And also, uh, particularly for the production, what's the importance of the uh, Mexican and the Latino market for this franchise and for Hollywood in general? 
That's a wrong question. Yeah. If I've ever heard one. How about you answer the first question? So for us, clearly, it's, you know, Latin America is a huge market, and clearly, it's great for us to be here and see so much the support and the love that there is for the franchise and for the characters. So we hope the movie does well. The people respond to the movie and tell everybody to go see the movie, and hopefully, it continues to grow the franchise for the many years to come. And uh, politically, I mean, I think. To me, what uh, the reason that you always see analogies from Star Wars used in pop culture and in politics and in current events, and the reason you've seen that for the past 40 years, no matter what the landscape is or what's happening, is because Star Wars, I think, is much more powerful than any direct political analogy ever could be. I think if you make a direct political analogy, it's a, it can immediately be diffused by recognizing the elements of it, disagreeing with them, and saying, blah, you're coming from here or there. I think the power of Star Wars is it's much deeper than that, and it's about the things underneath all that that really matter. Um, and that ultimately informs the stuff that's happening in our day-to-day -day lives. That's why it's so applicable to it. So, um, And I, I think that's the case with the original films, and I, I hope that's the case with what we're doing, doing now. Ok, tenemos tiempo para una pregunta más, por favor. A ver, adelante, por favor. Aquí en el frente. Aquí. Hi, well, Mexico, Arturo Tobar from Movix. Daisy, um, yesterday you saw what fans think of Mark, of Luke, how they overwhelmed, how they, it was overwhelming the, the response that they had. <coughs> Have you ever thought that in the future that's going to be you? And for Mark, uh, it, it's been said that uh, Star Wars is going to continue, that the universe is going to get wider. Do you think Luke might play a part of it, or do you think it's time for Luke to be to, to be like a part? Am I looking at a retirement plan? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to point out though that the enthusiasm last night was for for Daisy and, and for her character as much as it was for me. It was for all things Star Wars and for Ryan as a director. I mean, I'm telling you, I call them UPFs. It stands for Ultra Passionate Fans. And the, these are the fans that know more about the details of the movies than I do because they read the support, all the ancillary material. They read the novels.